everyone's asked me to be a sh straight shooter and just tell you what's going on. So let me try to explain everything that has happened. Okay. In the last week of, week of March, we responded to a set of circumstances mm -hmm. uh, beyond the control of the union and the company for that matter, as the airline industry just fell apart. We needed to get bids to you because we were running out of time to get bids. So we did give um, some waiver to Section 7A3, only that for the purpose of you having a bid to bid on because no one knew what was happening at that time. The airline didn't know how to schedule, okay? Um, it's a totally different circumstance right now. And yes, I've received the hundreds of emails. So I know everyone wants it to be like April, but I'm going to explain to you what is so different. Um, the company put out a communication, a scheduling communication to you. And they said that they asked the union for, um, for a waiver, which is a concession to section 7A3 uh, for May bidding. But what they didn't tell you um, are quite a few pertinent facts, okay? And this is what we have to know. So let's go back to March. In March, we had about 3,300 3, reserve flight attendants. Then everything fell out of part in the last week of March. And we gave that waiver, only said that you could get April schedules. Okay? So reserves went down to 1,200 people in April. Um as a result of that waiver. We knew that schedules are changing drastically. And when I'm saying drastically, I mean by the day. Every single MEC officer, every single local president, every single AFA rep is working round the clock for three weeks straight now since this started. We are working from before 6 o'clock in the morning, sometimes to 2 o'clock in the morning on four and five hours sleep because there are so many developments that are happening. And all these emails are saying, let's do what we did for April. But here's what the company is not telling you in that scheduling update. If we gave them the concession to 7A3, There would still be 8,000 people on reserve. That's almost triple what's on reserve for April. And that's giving the concession. And your MEC, we had spirited debate. We went over all the facts. We went over all the implications to continue on if we gave that concession. It affects your family leave. It affects your vacation. It affects your sick leave accrual. Okay? And yes, I understand people want to see out lines with 30 hours. What they don't understand and what we're trying to honestly communicate to you that the company hasn't even told you is there was going to be 8,000 flight attendants on reserve compared to 1,200 in April. So things would not have been the same. The emails that I'm getting from 2, 5, 10, 15 year flight attendants, they wanted how it was in April. The truth is, even with the concession, you would still be on reserve. We're trying to protect your paychecks. Ch flying was decimated just yesterday over the weekend in Newark. No one that bid lines thought that the Newark flying was going to, to change to the way it is in April. That's not what they bid on. Today, an announcement came. Further reductions in Los Angeles flights. Further reductions in San Francisco flights. No one can tell where this is going to end. No one can tell. No one can tell what the May schedule is going to be. No one. We can't tell what the April, the rest of April schedule is going to be because there's cancellations by the day. And we are trying to protect your income. I know people are worried about being on reserve, but think about it. There may not be anything other than minimal flights to fly for April, for May. It is nothing like April. Absolutely nothing like April. Ask Newark flight attendants. Ask um, LA flight attendants today that got the news. Ask San Francisco flight attendant that got the news. All those lines they bid, those flights aren't on in their lines anymore. And yes, the line holders are getting 71. 
if not giving the waiver going forward. These line holders would be getting 78 on reserve because there is no flying. We're down 90% of the flying, and they can't guarantee what more cuts are coming because even though New York has reached what we think is is the the crest, it's still not proven that it's the crest because it's moving now to other locations. It's moving across the country, this COVID-19. We're going to see more reductions by the day. We're going to see more schedule changes. And you need the protections. You need the protections. And yes, I know commuters are having a difficult issue, whether they were going to be on reserve. Quite frankly, commuters are having problems today getting to work. I am in pleading, I am in pleading, 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 pleading with management. We have had some really good work we've been doing through this crisis, but now they have to work for us because our flight attendants don't have millions in the bank. Our flight attendants, each of them have different financial situations. They need to be pay protected. The CARE Act protects the pay even if they had to pay you 78 hours for reserve, even if there was no flying and they had to pay you 78 hours in reserve. That's what the CARE Act is for. That portion that goes just to the workers does not put a cash drain on the corporation. There's the separate loan process for their operational things. And yes, we've been working on them. We've had to give them accommodations on the timelines because they don't know day from day what the scheduling is going to be. Um, It's changing. It's changing by the hour. The decisions that your MEC made, which is comprised of your 16 local presidents, went through every possible scenario. The decision not to do concessions at this time is because no one can guarantee what the flight schedule will be next week, let alone for May. You're going to be bidding for lines in May with flights in your schedule, pairings in your schedule. There is no certainty those pairings are going to operate. So I know the concern about going on reserve, but has the company told you that even if we gave the concession, Do you know that over, did you know that 50% of flight attendants would be on reserve in May, even giving the concessions? They're trying to make it look like it would be like April. It's like night and day, apples and oranges. It's nothing like April. It's going from some some 3,000 flight attendants on reserve to 8,000 with the concession. So yes, even though it puts maybe 3,000, 3,500 more on reserve, the flying is dwindling before our face. We are working closely with all other unions, all 20 unions in AFA. We are working with APFA like we have never in the history of that relationship worked with. We know the airlines are coming to the workers to get us out of this problem. And that's why we lobbied for those grants that just go to our pay. It is not coming out of United's operating expenses. That is what the grant money is for, to insure your paychecks, because this is going to get worse before it gets better. This is going to go on much longer than we thought. Bookings are off all the way through the end of the year. The bookings we're getting, the cancellations are canceling all the bookings. So yes, we have to save our airline But we, as the union, have to save our flight attendants to make sure you get a paycheck. Okay? Commuters, you're having difficulty. We're going down to one flight a day to the cities we serve. How are you possibly going to get to work? The company has to work with the union to protect you. Because, yes, I know you're not going to get discipline, but you're also not going to get pay. We have to work something out with the union and the company to, to be realistic about this. We can't just say to commuters, you can't get paid because you can't get to work, even though you want to come to work. Ask that question tomorrow. We can't, re- we can't talk about 
Scott Kirby saying he wants to lower FAA minimums. And even though I've been assured that was a misstatement, where's the communication to flight attendants saying it was a misstatement? Because I'll tell you, we will fight tooth and nail. We are not going to lower minimums on aircrafts. That only will cost us flight attendant jobs. Your union is out to protect you. I will have the personal conversation with as many people as possible. But when a five-year flight attendant is telling me, Ken, resign, I can't believe that you won't give the concession, thinking because he was a line holder in April, he is not a line holder in May, regardless of what decision the United MEC made. Some 10 and 15-year flight attendants that were line holders will not be uh, on the line holder status for May based on the concession that they're asking us for. Half of the population with the concession would be on reserve. We now have to deal with commuters. We need, we need to deal with reserves. Why put a notice out saying there's going to be so more standby assignments when the flight schedule is being decimated? Standbys for what? Standbys for what? They were pressuring us to give concessions. I believe that. I believe the, the communication with scheduling. Why didn't they tell flight attendants? that half of the flight attendants, even with the concessions, would be on reserve. That is not how we had it in April. It is completely a different scenario. In the last 14 days, everything has fallen from the bottom of this industry, and we are working day and night with the company to work with them to save our airline. But I'll be damned if it's going to be on the backs of flight attendants. I will be damned if my flight attendants don't receive a check. I'll be damned if they were going to tell commuters, well, I'm sorry, you only had one flight. If you couldn't get to work, oh, we won't punish you, but you're not going to get paid. That is not going to happen. We all need to stick together. Look what happened to Newark. Who would ever have thought 15 flights a day from Newark? Who would have ever thought the drastic cuts coming today to San Francisco, to L.A.? They're going to come to other bases. Now is not the time to pit us against one another. Now is the time for us to stand in solidarity. Yes, to save the company. But the grants pay our wages. That is not hurting the company. And if the company has to pay flight attendants 78 hours instead of 71, regardless of how many flights then so be it. That is what the CARES Act is about. So I'm asking you, please talk to your local leadership. This was passed by a 12 board to vote not to give concessions. Every airline, 20 airlines in AFA are not giving concessions. APFA is talking to us daily, not give concessions going forward. We're talking with Southwest flight attendants. This is not the time to give concessions. Once you give them now, it will be so hard to get them back. We are doing this for your protection. We are doing this to ensure junior flight attendants get a paycheck, senior flight attendants get a paycheck. Those that want to fly a 70-hour bid line, go ahead and bid it. I can guarantee you there's not going to be 70 hours in your line, not with the rate of cancellations. And if I seem frustrated, I'm frustrated because I need the company to work with us now. I need the company. Tell the full story. I have objected to the town hall tomorrow because they're going to talk about scheduling issues from their perspective without a union official there that is your representative to give you the full story. I want you to have every fact, and you're not getting every fact. Okay, so those that say I'm not listening to you, I am listening to you. But I have so much knowledge that's going in all these conversations, as well as your elected leadership, who is who is to, I can't say enough about them, every single AFA rep has been working endlessly to protect not only you, but to protect this airline. And I'm now asking senior management, get involved in these conversations, okay? Because it cannot come only at our expense. It cannot. And that is my message to you today. 
I know you may not understand why all these decisions are being made. Ask your lo- local leadership. I've tried to communicate some of the reasons why the flying just today. There's more flight cancellations that are going to be in your May bid package. This crisis is moving across the country. Yes, because I'm in New York, we felt it the worst. It is moving to other parts of the country. And every base is going to be affected. And for our flight attendants based in international locations, please stand up with them. Because now they have to stand up with the Newark flight attendants that don't have flying. They have to stand up with the San Francisco and L.A. flight attendants that are losing flying. And there will be other locations losing flying. But we have to protect our income. And the CARES Act packed by, passed by Congress protects our paychecks, even if it means United Airlines paying 78 hours instead of 71. That is what that part of the package is for, to ensure your security for your family. We don't have the millions in our bank accounts. We don't have the wages of some of the other labor groups on the property, okay, that maybe can weather this storm better than flight attendants. We need now to stick together. We need now, yes, to help the company get out of this, but not at our expense. This has to be shared, and concessions at this time are absolutely the wrong time when the CARES Act protects us from making any concession that would affect our wages, our benefits, and all of the other implication that goes with the concessions. So yes, I know you're angry. I know you're scared. I know we've never faced this in over 100 years. But for those of you that I'm getting through to, speak up, speak up, explain what we're doing. It is in the best interest of everyone. And I leave you on that note today. Please stand in solidarity. If you don't understand the, uh, the decisions, ask the questions. And I only ask you not to flood my email box because I am in talks with the company round the clock and it's clouding up the emails that I need to get that are important. Please, please support each other. Let's not turn against each other because every one of us is eventually going to feel this and we have to protect our families and we have to support our families. There are single mothers, there are commuters, There are people's lives being devastated from financial debt. Stick together, and that is the only way we'll get through this. Thank you for listening to me. I'm sorry for the technical difficulties that happened. I am in a basement apartment because I cannot live right now in my home, um, and I don't have the, um, the online services, so that's what took me so long to get on to you. I hope you can pass along what I'm saying to you, and, and please... Those of you that know me, speak up. You know I would not hurt flight attendants. You know that. You know that in your heart if you know me. Speak up to those that don't know me. I will fight to the bitter end to protect you. And with that, I say good night. Stay strong, and we will get this through this together. And we will also help our companies survive. That's imperative also. Good night.